So pit on here. Hands are crazy. And welcome back to a special edition of Gwinning, brought to you by YinzerCrazy.com. It is off-season for the Pittsburgh Penguins, but we don't have an off-season over here at Yinzer Crazy, and we're super stoked to be joined by a few of our Penguins contributors to break down the recent happenings in the NHL, which include, of course, the expansion draft and the Seattle Kraken. Joining the NHL is the official 32nd team in the league, and of course, uh, that came with some Penguins departures, and we'll get into that shortly. But first, let's meet the panel here today. Patricia and Luke are joining me. Guys, how have you been? Luke, what's new? I still you see, I still see you got the Pens towels uh, behind you there, even though it's the offseason. I really respect the, uh, the fandom. Part of the decor, Mike. It never comes down. I'm doing good. How are you? I'm great. And Patricia, you're rocking the Pens hat even in the offseason, so I could say the same for you. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been a good summer. Um, I, I've been a little bit more immersed in pirate stuff than I have been penguin stuff in my, my other gig. And I would like to add, I totally call the Henry Davis pick. Go, Meg. Nice. <laughs> but other than that, it's been an awesome summer. Nice. We got to get Patricia on one of the episodes of Bucking Crazy. If you checked out our Pirates web series, maybe we'll convince her one of these days to sneak on over. I know she does a lot of great work for Bucks Dugout, so we'll see if we can make that happen. All right. Let's get right into the hot story of the day. We had a write-up from Elliot Hicks on yinzercrazy.com today about the Penguins losing turbo Brandon Tanev. Unfortunately, he was poached from the Penguins' unprotected list by the Seattle Kraken. The man became a hero in the 4-1-2 in this recent playoff run. And yes, the key member of the BART line, you guys, is gone. The T in the Bluger, Aston Reese. Tanev line is no longer existing. First of all, I feel like this was just done despite me, but I, uh, I've got to get over that. Let's talk Brandon Tanev. Patricia, I'll start with you. On a scale of absolutely devastated, like me, to not so big of a deal, where do you put this loss? Um, it wasn't surprising. It really wasn't. Um, the only other name I heard bandied around that the Kraken might take was Zach Aston Reese. But from the Penguins' point of view, you're looking at a guy who makes just a little bit too much money to be on the fourth line. And I am sad. I will, I will deeply miss Turbo. He was a lot of fun to watch. But I know there was a lot of talk, you know, they were going to take Zucker, Aston Reese. I, I think Tanif was in their sights for a long time, which might explain why he was the first one to be officially pictured in a Kraken jersey. He, he knew he was going. I wish him very well. I, I'm not going to become a Kraken fan, but I'm still going to pay attention to what Tanif does because he, he brought so much energy to the Pens this past season, and I hope he does so for the Kraken and gets a little bit more opportunity on the ice as well. Yeah, I, I am on a little bit of the opposite spectrum of you, Patricia. I really, really thought that Zucker or Aston Reese were the two best options for the Kraken. And, you know, we'll get into their full draft in just a minute here. But um, Tanev just, I don't know, it wasn't something that I felt like it was on the radar. If you're taking something for a new team like that, yeah, he could be good for the fourth line. Yeah, the Pens didn't want them to, to have that cap um, with someone like you said. But um I really thought that they were going to look for speed. I thought they were going to look for someone that had a little bit more uh, longevity to them. You know, he's a little bit older uh, for someone to be taken in the draft on a fourth line capability, but um, I was taken aback. I didn't think Tanev would go. I'm going to miss him. Uh, I'm going to miss his antics. Like you said, I'm going to try to check him out on the Kraken and see exactly kind of what he's doing over there. But um, I hope he keeps up that same spirit that he had because that was just a fun play style. And I hope he brings that whenever he goes. Yeah, no question about it. And you mentioned the, the Kraken's draft. Uh, of course, there were some names that were relatively big names selected. Mark Giordano, uh, the longtime Calgary defenseman, along with guys like uh, Jordan Everly from the Islanders and, of course, Brandon Tanner, who we already mentioned. But I think the bigger story at the end of the day is the names they did not take. Uh, names like Carey Price, a goalie who, of course, just led his team all the way to the Stanley Cup Finals, essentially put the hats on his back. Uh, one of the best goalies uh, in, in the world, for, for my money, and, and I don't think I'm going out on a limb there whatsoever. 
Uh, guys like P.K. Subban, who could immediately become a face of the franchise as well. Vladimir Tarasenko. Um, and, of course, Jason Zucker, a guy we just mentioned. Patricia, what do you make of their strategy? Does it make sense to you? Uh, would you have done anything differently? It's. I really don't think this draft should be compared to the Vegas draft. That was a completely different animal. And while, while I was researching this, I, I thought to myself of a favorite taunt I used to use on the Capitals fans I knew, where I'm like, you know, the only reason you have a cup is because you played against a first-year expansion team in the finals. That, that goes over really well. You should try it sometime. Um, but... I mean, I've been reading a lot from Kraken fans and just just people in general. And they're like, you know, oh, why didn't they take Price? Why didn't they take this? I think, and, and Luke alluded to this a little earlier in our correspondence, that just because they didn't take people in the draft doesn't mean they're not going to be on the team. Um, a, a good example of this is Gabriel Landeskog from the Avalanche, who obviously is a free agent and is kind of the odd man out now that Nathan McKinnon is basically the face of the franchise for the Avs. They might be willing to, to offer money, offer big money to someone to come and be the face of the franchise. Um, you mentioned P.K. Subban. I think he might be another one. I think he would be a little bit cheaper than Landis Gog. But, you know, the draft is just this, the draft. And a, fa a favorite saying seems to be that the most popular player in this draft was cap space. And, and I think that they are going to use that cap space to an advantage and attract some, I don't want to say higher caliber player, but it's higher price players. And speaking of price, no, they are not going to get Corey Price. They are absolutely not. Just get it out of your mind right now. It's not happening. Yeah, I, I was shocked. Uh, I, I thought for sure whenever Price waived his no trade clause, I thought for sure he was going to be there. You know, it's not that I don't think Vanek is – a great goaltender. Uh, Decord, I've heard some good things about him. There are a lot of players in there that mix it up, and, and like you said, Eberle and, and some others that are very good and, and high that I would have taken. But there's others that just it, it shocks me and surprised me. You know, overall, if I were grading this draft, I would put it at a C. And, you know, we are talking, yes, we have, I think, 21 million still in cap space. So they will be making trades, they'll be doing what they can to acquire some type of face of the franchise, but who that is, you know, uh, I, I think, I think we're comparing this a little too much to Vegas. And I think that's what I had in my mind. Uh, when flurry went over, it was emotional, especially for us over here in Pittsburgh, but you know, you had a goaltender who had cups on his, on his roster. And, you know, you had a lot of different players that were going over. Uh, you know, I believe James Neal was on that. Um, I believe, um, there was a yeah. few other oh, yeah. big, big names that you really saw go to Vegas right away and immediately made them a contender. And that was my initial impression of this draft. I thought, well, how is Seattle going to be a contender? Who are the big names that they're going to get and, and how are they going to gel? And, you know, aside from Everly and, and a few others, I'm just I'm like, ah, you know, I, I don't. I don't see this huge franchise coming straight away from the Kraken. So I think if we do see some big moves with this cap space that we have, I think if they acquire someone like a Subban, but even, even then, you know, I'm, I'm looking at it. Like it felt like with Vegas, they stole players. It felt like they just got the best of the best out of the draft. And, you know, if you're willing to do it with the cap space, I think that they have a chance, but it's just not the same to me. And it just doesn't feel, feel like that Vegas era expansion. It just feels lackluster. Yeah, they do have about 30 million cap space. So I, I like how you put it, Patricia. That seemed to be their biggest pick of this whole draft was the fact that they still have all that cap remaining, obviously, to go out and make another splash. I'll give you a quote from uh, Dave Haxtell, their new head coach. And he said this post-draft. He said, the message is let's come together. Let's play hard for one another. And let's play hard for the city of Seattle. We want to have a group of guys that know what it is to be a great teammate, know what it is to be a competitive teammate, and push one another to be at their very best. We want to have a bunch of selfless guys in our locker room that know how to go out and play hard together and win together. And it sounded like he issued that statement kind of in response to some of the backlash they got for skipping the superstars. 
I saw some headlines earlier this, <laughs> you know, this morning that were like Kraken skip superstars in hoping that to find group that looks to win together as a team. Well, my first thought was, you know what helps you win? Superstars. Uh, so I, <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't know that, that it's a, it's, you know, you're always doing a chemical equation back there. Sometimes maybe just taking the best players is the easiest route. So personally, I would have taken Carey Price. I understand building your defense uh, kind of like Vegas did initially too, uh, and finding some forwards who will gel, to, gel together like the Tanos and the Everleys of the world. But I would have taken Carey Price. I think he's one of the best goalies in the league, has a very similar feel to Marc-Andre Fleury, of course, when he left the Penguins for the Golden Knights. And hey, listen, I think he made them, would have made them a contender right away um the kraken that is and you can't put a price tag on that you're a contender other players want to come play for you and you immediately of course garner national recognition i don't know that they'll have that yet so a break for the montreal canadians that's for sure it was not a break that the penguins were unfortunately uh forced to give up brandon tanev but they also lost another forward in jared mccann a few days earlier to the toronto maple leafs who now is actually on the Seattle Kraken as well, as they left him unprotected, and as he was exposed, he was selected. So the Pens are down two forwards from the last time we all spoke. Luke, I'll, I'll start with you. I, I, how panicked are you? Are you alarmed by these two losses? There's got to be a backup plan in place somewhere, right, to bring in some additional help on those third and fourth lines. Yeah, and uh, kind of like we have been talking about with the Penguins even during the playoffs, um, I think it is more so about just bringing in some younger, newer talent right now for us, bringing up maybe a little bit of cap space. Like uh, Patricia said before, Tanev, how great he was, how much we loved him, a little bit too much of a cap hit for his age and being on a fourth line. Um, McCann is a bigger loss, in my opinion, than Tanev is. Uh, whenever I saw him going uh, initially over to um, Montreal or uh, Toronto, it was mm -hmm. – uh, something that you had alluded to before we even got on the on the talk is it was more of just a ploy for them to get rid of somebody and, and be able to trade over to the Kraken instead of losing someone else. So um, it's interesting to see. Um, I, I think, again, too, even on the Kraken side, um, there's so many people on Toronto that they could have had. And whether this was a backroom deal that was, you know, three-step process that uh, was allowing Toronto to keep a lot more people than they wanted to, uh, or if it was just something that they really wanted McCann, uh, I'm almost a little worried, you know, you, the way, uh, the quote that you said and, and the way you were talking about uh, the situation with the Kraken, I got Bob Nutting feels <laughs> to it. So <laughs> right, right. I'm hoping uh -oh. <laughs> that this isn't a money ball or a money puck situation. And uh, the Kraken are just literally rounding up some uh, people right now that they can put a baseline in and then hopefully trade for, like you said, a superstar name. But, and I'm still, I'm still like, why, why not carry price? <laughs> You're not getting carry price. <laughs> <laughs> Just put that out of your mind right now. They're not getting them. I, I want to touch a, a, a little bit back. Because I am old, the Vegas, the Vegas Golden Knights are an exception to the expansion. They are not the rule. Very expansion true. teams notoriously suck. They notoriously suck usually for a very long time. That so many people are expecting the Kraken to, to pull a Vegas and be world beaters the first year is, is very unrealistic. Yeah. Can they contend? Can can they be competitive? Yes, I think so. Are they going to go to the Stanley Cup Finals like the Knights? Probably not. Their draft is it's. I mean, it's a lottery. It's a gamble. You hope everybody gels. Nobody sucks. Nobody gets injured, and you hope for the best. You do that with every draft, and that's why I am not really panicking over this. Yes, I'm going to miss Canav. McCann, uh, Mike, as I Twittered you the other day, I predicted they were going to get rid of McCann, and they did. Um, I, I think Vaughn Hextall is really looking – he wants to put his own stamp on the team. Right now, Jim Rutherford's hands are, are still very much in the pie. And I, I think Hextall wants to say, okay, I want to bring in guys I like. Um, as far as who might be on his radar, I, I think it's still – a little bit too early. I, I think they kind of want to do what the pirates are doing and, and try to bring people up from Wilkes-Barre, you know, you know, Pierre, Olivia Joseph, you know, guys like that, you know, rather, rather than, than go out and 
rent help or buy help. So I, I want to say it's going to be okay. The pens are going to be Patricia, I, I was going to going to offer up that one, you're, you're not that old, but then I think you said, yes, I am. Yes, I, I think, am. Shut well, up. I think you said you Twittered me. And so I can't offer you that lifeline anymore. <laughs> after, after that, I, I think I can't save you um, falling down. All right, let's get you guys out of here on this. The penguins related question. I've heard conflicting reports multiple times. Uh, one person saying they do plan on bringing some veteran goaltending help in to help relieve Tristan Jari, take some pressure off him. And then another saying, you know what, they're fine. Jari is going to be the guy and DeSmith is probably going to be the backup again. I know we don't have any immediate solutions or insight currently. What's your gut tell you, Luke, and what, what should they do? This is a hill that I'm going to die on. Let's keep Jari in there. Let's keep him going. Uh, you know, I did th- say that during – uh, the last winning episode that it would probably help if we had some veteran presence in the back there. Uh, you know, Patricia and um, some other people did allude to the fact that, you know, Pekka Rene would have been a good choice. I know he just did retire, so that's off the table, but um, you know, there, there's some truth to getting some veteran presence back in the net. Um, DeSmith and Jari are both so young and it could be a couple seasons that we see this happen, but um I don't know. I, I, I really think that if we give Jari a chance and the city actually puts their back into helping him get to where he needs to be, it's going to be something that he is capable of doing. I've seen flashes of him in the playoffs. I know he looked like he was a rookie sometimes and he made those rookie mistakes, but there were flashes of real greatness with him. And yeah, he had trouble with his glove hand, but it wasn't as bad as whenever we had. Um, oh my God, why am I blanking on? Our last goal Matt Murray. Matt Murray. <laughs> it wasn't as bad as Matt Murray's hand. It wasn't as bad as we've seen previously. We've given shit to Flurry. We've given shit to Murray. We've had so many different goaltenders in here in the last couple of years that I think we need to settle down, let Jari do his thing, and he will prevail because I just don't see a market right now where we can purchase, especially with our cap space that we have. I don't see us bringing in a goaltender that's going to make that much of a difference. It seems that Penn's fans cried a little harder than they had to when Flurry got the Vesna. Because they're like, oh my God, we could have kept him away. And and I think that Flurry got this award more as a body of work thing rather than, I mean, he did have a good season. There's no denying it. But, you know, you you, you look back over the years, you know, they they do body of work. And I, I think that's what this one was. I agree with Luke. I think people are being way too hard on Jari. He he did look much better than Murray. He, he kept his glove hand up, which was was and is Murray's biggest problem, is he has his glove hand down. So I'm like, get it up, get it up. Um, give him a chance. And also keep in mind that we, we are going into the twilight years for Sid and Gino. You know, Sid is going to be 34 in a couple weeks. Gino is going to be 35 at the end of this month. I don't want to say it's over, you know, when, when you have not one, but two generational talents on the same team, you get very spoiled. But I always want the Pens to win, but at the same time, I'm realistic. You know, you have the aging core and there's only so much you can do. So again, don't panic. It's going to be okay. Chill. All right. You heard it here first. Don't panic from Yinzer Crazy's own Patricia Beninato and Luke Renali, if you're watching us from a Facebook group today, I noticed that the Penguins Facebook groups are humming today uh, in, in result of the Tanev McCann aftermath. So one, we thank you. Two, please subscribe to our YouTube channel over at Yens Are Crazy. It's free to do it and you get all this great content. You can catch up on episodes of Gwinning. You can catch up on Buck and Crazy, our pirate series. You can catch up on our recent episode of the Enzeritas with Steelers linebacker Alex Highsmith and much, much more. We thank you so much. Guys, I thank you for joining me for this one-off episode. Let's do it again soon. And before you know it, it's going to be winter right around the corner, and hockey will be back. Doesn't that excite you? Yay! Absolutely. All right, thanks. We'll see you next time. Let's go, fans. I know yins are crazy, but so am I. Number one sports site in the Berg. Let me show you why. The latest stories in unbeatable podcasts with your favorite athletes. You know you can't pause that. 
Super Bowl, World Series, Stanley Cup champs. Rising stars, bird personalities for the fans.